Waiting on a couple more of y'all to get in here. Get your word. We're going to Psalms 133. Let's look at Psalms 133. Get your word. Get your word. Get your word. Let's get us a nightcap tonight. Get your word. Let's go to Psalms 133. Psalms 133. Let's go to Psalms 133 tonight. Let's grab us a nightcap tonight before before I pass out tonight. Seems like it's going to be a little early night tonight for me tonight. I'm usually up pretty late, but... I'm tired. I took me a good um took me a good warm bubble bath and I'm a little relaxed now. So let's get this um nightcap. So let's go to Psalms 133. Psalms 133. Psalms 133. Let me share this with y'all. Um I wake up with a word. I go to bed with a word. So, morning times I've been jumping on, allowing y'all to get in on my meditation. Tonight, I'm going to let y'all get in on my nightcap. Um, so, my nightcap is going to be tonight on, um, on Psalms 133. Psalms 133. It's only three verses in Psalms 133. So, it's not a whole lot that's in it. Psalms 133. So, make sure that you're looking at your word. Psalms 133, I apologize for um, text messages and all that stuff like that coming in. So the things, the pings that you hear, I apologize. It, it just doesn't stop. Um, Psalms 133. Psalms 133 and verse 1. These are familiar passages of scriptures too. They're very familiar, but let's awaken them up tonight. Let's awaken them within ourselves tonight. How many of y'all other than me, when you read the word of the Lord, you read it so that it speaks to you. It's not just like you're just, you're not picking up some little random book and just reading, but you're reading so that it speaks to your heart because you want to have it within yourself. So when, um, so how many of you other than me do that? So check this out. So Psalms 133 verse one, it's only three verses. It's only three verses in Psalms 133. Uh, it's not the shortest you know, um, in the Bible, it's not the shortest, but it, you know, um, what is the shortest scripture in the Bible? Uh, Jesus wept. I think that's the shortest scripture in the Bible, but, um, Psalms 133, uh, it's only three verses again. Verse one says this right here. It says, behold. Now, when you understand the word behold, you realize that it means capture. It is more than to just look. It means that you're to you're going to capture that thing. It's going to get your attention. It's going to draw your focus. And so it says, behold, hold up. When you see the word behold, 
It means pump your brakes, you know, like John, when Jesus was coming, he told the people, he says, behold, the Lamb of God will take it away the sins of the world. So it means to capture your attention, to make sure that it pumps your brakes, stop what you're doing. So he says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. We're going to go in here for a few minutes tonight. Check this out. It says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, in unity. So it's so many adjectives and so many, so many adjectives, so many descriptive words inside of that one verse there. It uses the word, it says it's good. Then it goes on and it talks about pleasant. So it's good, it's pleasant. And then it gives a narrative as to what, who is good and pleasant for. It says it's good and it's pleasant for brethren. It's good and it's pleasant for brethren, which means brethren. And in the church world, brethren means that, you know, us as the body of Christ, us, those of us that name the name Jesus, those of us that consider ourselves to be part of the body of Christ. It says this here, brethren, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren. The descriptive words in there is good and pleasant. Now, these are words that are describing things that it should be concerning the brethren. Check it out. This is, these are things that are describing what it should be for the brethren. I'm in Psalms 133. Make sure you get your word. Let's look at it. Let's go in Psalms 133 and bust this thing wide open before I go to sleep tonight. I'm a little tired. I took a good, hot, warm bubble bath while we go. Um, I was going to read a book, but I got a phone call that I had to take, so I couldn't even read, you know, my book. I did. I, I got one page read in the book while I was, you know, just chilling, but I had to take the phone call, so I make no, I have no regrets for taking that call. But um, Psalms 133, verse 1, behold, first word in it, behold, behold. The word behold, when you see the word behold, it means pump your brakes, draw your attention to, pay close attention to this. That's what it means when you see behold, behold. John the Baptist again said, behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus was approaching them. John was drawing their attention off of him and putting their attention on Jesus. He says, look, behold, get your eyes off me and get your eyes over there. So while he, the, the, the narrator of Psalms 133 says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let's get in that. Look, it gives the descriptive words in that is good. It says it's good, and then it says pleasant, and then it gives a, a, it's a descriptive, but it gives a narrative of who is in this, who is in context, where is the noun, the who is the brethren, so the brethren is good and pleasant for brethren to do what? The, the, the what is the end of it it is to dwell together in unity, so when we find ourselves not dwelling together in unity, what is going to be the opposite? What's going to be the opposite? What's the opposite of good? Bad. What's the opposite of pleasant? Unpleasant. So then he's letting us know that when we find ourselves in situations as to where we're not dwelling together in unity, where we're not dwelling together in unity, that it is going to be bad and it is going to be unpleasant. That's verse 1. Let's go into verse 2 now, Psalms 133, verse 2. This works for your household as well, you know, just so those of y'all know. It works for anything that you do. You need to make sure that you do well together in unity as it relates to it. Because if you don't, it's not going to be good and it's not going to be pleasant. Why? Because it's going to be chaos. There's going to be confusion. There is going to be all types of aggravation that's going to be going on. But it says it's good and it's pleasant when we do well together in unity unity. Dwell. Look at the word that he uses, dwell. What do we call our houses? It is our dwelling place. It is the place where we reside. It is the covering that's over us. So if we ever allow something to get inside of our dwelling place, something that is bad, something that is not pleasant, it is going to cause some trouble. What is it? After the end of verse 1, tells you what it's after. It clearly tells you what it is trying to destroy. It's trying to destroy the unity. 
is trying to tear up the unity. It does not want it to be a unity. I'm going to talk to y'all before I go to sleep tonight about some things. It does not want it to be unity. That's what it's after. Verse 2. Verse 2 says this. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. Look what it says. Verse 2 says it. What is it? The unity. The unity, when we are unified, when we are one, what it does is, is it causes a precious ointment. Precious ointment. The scripture, when it talks about a precious ointment, you think about Mary Magdalene, I do. I think about that precious oil that she poured upon his feet as she cried and wiped his his feet with her hair. That precious oil, this oil that was accumulated, some theologians said it was accumulated because of her with prostitution. That's what some of them would say. But it was a precious oil. That oil was so precious that Judas was mad when she took the oil and put it on Jesus' feet. He said, we could have sold that oil for 300 pence. So he became angry about the fact that that oil was poured on Jesus' feet. So oil is very precious. That's the reason why we have bottles of oil that are symbolic to that of the Holy Spirit. So it talks about here, it says, it is like a precious ointment upon the head, that oil, that anointment that is upon the head. The thing of it is, is this here. It is very precious. What's precious? Unity. Unity is very precious, y'all. It is a very precious thing. It's nothing that needs to be disregarded. It's not something that needs to be nonchalantly looked at. It is very precious. Precious. I'm going to tell you why. Keep just hanging here with me a few minutes. I'm going to explain to you why it's very precious. And we're going to get there. We only got three verses tonight. We only got three verses. There's only three verses in Psalms 133. Just go ahead, sit down, calm yourself, get you something to drink. Let me take you in now to help you. Let me help some houses tonight. Let me help some people that are struggling even with not being unified within themselves. Look, check this out. It says it. What is it? Unity is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. So it says unity causes something to begin upward. It starts up and begins to flow down is when there is unity. When there is unity, it starts up. And it begins to run down so that it saturates. It begins to permeate in all the areas. It runs down. It says it ran down upon the beard of even Aaron's beard all over his face. Face. It got all over, it just permeated everything that oil did that went down to the skirts of his garment. It just saturated everything. So when there is unity, it is to let us know that it takes precedent over everything. It gets involved in everything. When we have unity where it's supposed to be, it gets involved in all five areas of our lives. The five areas of our lives is our spiritual being physical being, our emotional being, our financially being, our spiritual being. The, the, the five areas, I hope I didn't repeat, repeat one, two times. If I did, I'll go back through them and give them to y'all again. The five areas of our lives, those things, it is going to, we're going to be unified in all those areas when we allow the ointment to flow from the head down. The thing the enemy is after is being unified. He does not want us to be unified. He does not want us to be unified one with God. He does not want us to be unified one with ourselves. Believe it or not, people are separated from themselves. Separated from themselves. They're not in unison with themselves. That's why they're so up and down all the time. One day they feel like this, the next minute they feel like that. Because they're not in unison with themselves. 
ourselves. Then he does not want us to be in unison with each other. He wants it to be confusion. He wants it to be all types of chaos and all types of trouble. Does not want it to be unity. And so that's what he's after. But the Lord is saying that when we have unity, unity, that it flows down. It begins to flow down. But notice, I love the fact of where it starts. 